what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel in today's video I wanted to make a really important video about scams the different types of scams out there what to look out for and how to avoid them possibly to the best of our abilities now in particular the one scam I actually wanted to show you guys is one that's based on the classified ads whether you're trying to buy sell or trade they use a legitimate website in order to make contact with you and then from there they try to scam you out of your money but before we get into that it's really important that we understand that scams are now a common occurrence nowadays and the best way to avoid them is to be extremely vigilant and weary and suspicious of any activity that you come across basically we need to drill into our brains and accept the fact that scams are now a reality and a part of our everyday world and the quicker we comprehend that the quicker we're better off by far i tell you that way we are aware and informed about the different types of scams and we can be extremely cautious of any suspicious activity that we come across it's very important that when you come across things that you are unsure of that you go with your common sense your gut feeling and your instincts but more importantly there is nothing more precious than staying up to date and being educated on the different types of scams that are circulating now here in australia we actually have dedicated websites and i mean legitimate websites that upload and frequently update their websites with the different types of scams that are out there but not only that even the banks and the tax office are now even uploading on their websites the same information so it just goes to show how serious it is now how these scam artists are everywhere and they'll do anything in order to con you out of your hard-earned money so we need to start spreading the word to family and friends and basically to everyone out there which is why I'm making this video today because if you've ever experienced a scam like I have you know how hurtful it can be that someone out there can go to the trouble and prey on good hard working people like you and I and scam us out of our hard earned money that we put our blood sweat and tears into earning and maybe you've got a mortgage or you're trying to save for something or you're trying to pay for something these guys do not care all they care about is trying to get as much money from you as possible by any means necessary now they can even get it through different ways sometimes they can pretend to be a charity and they can also pretend to go on like those dating websites and then pull on your heartstrings and also get you to sympathize and empathize with them that way you'll send them gifts or help them out in any way like even buying them gift certificates that's what I mean by they will con you into giving them money by any means whether it be actual cash or through gifts or gift certificates they do not care they don't care whether you're rich they probably actually prefer it if you're rich but they don't care whether you're poor whether you're young old financially struggling nada all they care about is getting as much money from you as possible by any means necessary now to say that scams can be stopped is an understatement and basically wishful thinking with technology being so advanced nowadays these scam artists are coming up with new sophisticated ways in order to scam us out of our money basically they sit at home and come up with new conniving ways to scam us out of our money and take advantage of us in any way possible how someone can take advantage of our generosity goodwill good faith and overall hard-earned money just infuriates me I mean if you've ever been scammed before you know exactly how I feel and it's not a good feeling for someone to take advantage of us for their own benefits and for their own personal gain it's just so infuriating and it, to say that it truly takes the scum of the earth to take advantage of our hard-earned money and to co commit such a criminal act is another understatement and I truly believe that these puckers need to get what's coming to them so i truly believe in karma and honestly if you believe in karma as well you'll know these guys are going to get what's coming to us so to all the scammers out there 
you guys are going to get what's coming to you and karma is going to bite you in the ass even harder than before whether it be something bad that happens to you now i normally don't wish anything bad on anyone but for these scam artists to go out of their way to take advantage of people like like us then i have nothing to say about that apart from karma is a bitch and you will get it tenfold now moving on without getting sidetracked the scam i actually wanted to show you guys is based on a uh, classifieds website here in australia and it's one called gumtree basically it's a site where like i was explaining before it's a site where you can post anything up for buying selling or trading and even for goods or services provided particularly the one that they tried to scam me on is one where i, I had a car up for sale and the reason why they prey on classified ads like selling a car is due to the fact that it involves a substantial amount of money because like i said they try to get as much money from you as possible to as little as money from you as possible so what you have to also understand is that these scam artists don't care all they care about is getting money by any means necessary so the scam that they come up with always has a backstory and the backstory is basically where they try to come up with the most convincing story as possible and the most common one they use is one where they work for a legitimate company offshore and due to their busy schedule to limited to no cell phone service or mobile phone service or phone service it would be best to communicate through email now that should be a red flag already I'll tell you why in just a sec. Also, they also try to make you an offer that's too good to be true. Now, an offer that's too good to be, if anything is too good to be true, a red flag should already go off because it is too good to be true for that reason, that it's too good to be true. And they also go on to say that because they are interstate, they would have to send an agent or a third party courier in order to pick up the car. Now, if you're trying to buy a used car, don't you think that someone would need to have a look at the car, to test the car, to even just see the car before they actually buy it? So that should also set off red flags already as well. Now, then they go on to pretend to ask you about the car, just to pretend to be like any other average Joe looking for a car. And they do all this via email. Not one phone contact, not anything, no contact whatsoever. Even though they have access to the internet, they don't want to Skype you or they can't Skype you or even talk to you through other means. That's also another red flag right there. And then once you sound interested, genuinely interested, that's when they go to phase two of their scam and they basically pretend to be a legitimate company like PayPal and they try to con you into thinking or into believing that because they don't have access to their credit cards, etc., that they will then pay you through PayPal, a legitimate website, which is actually a very secure way to pay someone internationally or just interstate. But the problem is that even though they're trying to be a legitimate site like PayPal, the most important thing to remember here is to actually look out for irregularities in the emails. Now, the fact that they actually use emails only is also a red flag. So, and then they go on to say that in order for their payment, for the payment that they have sent you to clear, because they actually start to send you an email receipt that they have actually paid you the funds in full. Now, that's what I'm going to show you right now, right here. But before we get into that, I just wanted to explain to you guys that these are the things that you need to look out for. And these are the red flags in that story alone. These are the red flags that you need to look out for. The fact that the backstory involves them not being around, being interstate or unreachable, and the fact that they have no cell phone, uh, mobile phone service or cell phone service in America, you guys call it cell phones, and the fact that they only want to communicate through email. All these should be red flags. And then when they make you an offer above your asking price, an offer that's too good to be true, that's a red flag. All these should be sending off red flags in your head. If they haven't gone off in your head yet, then 
what I'm about to show you has to do it for you. Now basically, this is the receipts from PayPal. Now, as you can see, with every receipt from PayPal, this is a receipt for paying an actual clothing shop merchant. And this is a receipt for when you receive funds. And this is, also, this is a receipt for when I've sent a payment to somebody. Now, if you take a look at all these receipts, you see the one thing that they have in common is the fact that they have the PayPal logo and it's also addressed to your full name. Because once you become a verified PayPal user, PayPal do not greet you with generic greetings like Dear PayPal member or Dear PayPal user. When you become a verified PayPal user, PayPal will always email you and address you by your full name due to the fact that they already have a 100 point system in order for you to become a member. You have to send in your credit card, your Medicare card or bank card, as well as a documentation that proves that you live at the address that you say you live at and also that it is your full name. So now getting back to it, as you can see, it's all addressed to my full name. I've just scribbled it out here in um, black ink, but in those areas of black ink, that's all my full name right there, as you can see at the top. And the first thing you can look out for is the service address that it comes from. As you can see, PayPal have a service address, a service email that is all written in lowercase. Now, when you look at the scamming letter, email receipt, it's written in uppercase, the S and the the, the two P's in PayPal, they're in uppercase. Also, it's addressed to my email address, not my full name. So I'm pretty sure if you're new to these online transactions, you wouldn't be able to pick out these things. But if you think of common sense and common knowledge when it comes to dealing with PayPal, but that's only for people who have dealt with PayPal before. If you haven't dealt with PayPal before, at least if you're unsure of something or something seems out of place or something doesn't seem right, what you should always do, forward the email to PayPal themselves. But make sure you go via the actual PayPal website and go into your account and click on help. That way you know you're actually contacting PayPal themselves and the help center from PayPal. Because if we keep going on through this email, we can see that the way that they put the transaction ID as well, as you can see here, the transaction ID and the transaction date. PayPal never ever put the transaction ID in the same way. As you can see from here, PayPal actually put your transaction ID here in blue and the date up top. And then they always have a title of what, as, what you've actually done, whether you've sent a payment, whether uh, you've received funds, or whether you've just made a payment. See, all these have a specific title and is set out in a specific way. And also, here, they the scammers actually tell you to work with a third party like Western Union. Now, Western Union has got to be the dodgiest website ever and the dodgiest way for scammers to scam you. If you receive anything that is related to Western Union, it is 99.9% .9 a scam. So never ever go forward with anything related to Western Union unless you actually know the person on the receiving end. Because I can almost guarantee you that if you do send any money through Western Union, there is no way you're getting a dollar back. The scammers actually use Western Union because they know that once they receive any funds from you, that fund has just disappeared and there is no way for you to track it or get it back. Whereas PayPal, they actually have buyer and seller protection. So if you've bought something that you are unhappy with or it's not as described or someone has scammed you out of it and not, not sent you the goods or services that you have paid for, then PayPal have your back on that and they give you protection and insure you for it and will actually pay you back. Put the funds on hold and the person that tried to scam you will get a negative on their uh, PayPal account. That way you're protected. Now, that does work, but you also have to remember that 
PayPal only works to a certain extent. You also need to make sure that you do your part and follow their product disclosure statement in order to stay protected. Now, there is more information on PayPal's actual website, but I just wanted to go through the actual basics of these emails that I got. And so, as you can see from the scammers also, they go on to put a note in here saying that all transactions are monitored and that in order to reply to them, you just have to reply directly to the email. Now, PayPal never do that. PayPal actually tell you that the, here it is, I'll just show you. PayPal actually show you here that the mailbox is not monitored and you will not receive a response because all PayPal emails are basically monitored unless you're asking for dispute resolution and so forth. So for them to actually say that in order to contact them, you just have to reply directly to their email is a red flag also you know so as you can see here i've picked out all the irregularities in the scamming email compared to the legitimate email from paypal then they go on to actually display western union that's another red flag because paypal would never work hand in hand with western union they don't work with any other third parties and basically they go on to show you transport details etc and the amount of money and that it's verified, the money's been confirmed. And on the next page, it actually says that the fund status, that it's available. Now, PayPal would never ever tell you to work, to go to Western Union and pay for, pay for something. Or better yet, even send money to a transport party. Because PayPal are basically there to secure transactions between two people or two companies so they would never tell you to go to western union and make a transfer basically shipping details and payment details are all worked out between the seller and the buyer and paypal have nothing to do with that so that's another red flag and then also going on to the payment fund status and that it's available you never ever do anything until you can physically see that cash in your account. So even though they have sent you money and they're telling you that the funds can only clear in your, in your PayPal account once you send them money to their third party, that's a con in itself because you should never ever, and I mean never ever, I can't stress that enough, do anything until you can physically withdraw that cash out of your bank account because all they are trying to do is con you into believing that the funds are actually there ready to and available ready for you to withdraw as long as you do your part and send that money to their third party. Basically, they will be that third party ready to collect those funds from Western Union with the details you provide and the MTCN number. Now, that's just a whole nother thing. The MTCN number is just how Western Union have a go by their transaction ID but that's a that's a whole nother story and I'm not here to talk about that and as you can see their closing paragraph is nothing like PayPal's PayPal on the bottom of every single statement these are all the legitimate ones they have their product disclosure statement where they list how long they've been in business they also list their ABN number and their license number as well as the PayPal email address, like email ID, and they always have the combined financial services guide and product disclosure statement in the end paragraph. There it is there, there it is there, there it is there, and there it is there. Also, when you make a payment to somebody, this is exactly what it looks like. You've just made a payment, and this is the type of email they need to forward to you. And last but not least, they then have the balls to say that it is from the director himself, which is David Marcus, PayPal Inc., the president. He is so busy, I doubt that the president would ever have the time to sit down and type out an email to you. Whether it be automated or not, the president of PayPal would never contact you himself. They do that to try and get you to believe that, you know, it's legitimate because, oh, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, the... The president has contacted me, so it must be legit. 
but no that is not the case and you really need to be careful about that because as you can see at the end of every paypal email receipt here you never have a signed letter from the president himself so you know these are the things that you need to watch out for now i'll give you a closer look at these and do a close-up on them as i list all the other ways that you can avoid scams and the types of scams and you know the best way to avoid them i'll actually show you a close-up of these and then you can actually pick them out for yourselves so basically this is what i wanted to show you and if you don't know about online transactions and how paypal actually works maybe there is a chance that you'll get duped but that's why i tell you you need to use common sense and your instincts when it comes to these things when it comes to western union you should know and you should also be warned in advance that anything related to western union is a scam and as you can see i've pointed out all the irregularities but if you want to get into more detail about all these inconsistencies and irregularities you need to do your research yourself but if you're ever unsure of anything always forward the email to paypal first because these days these scam artists are getting so technical that they can even copy and paste what paypal write in their email receipts but there is always the chance that they won't get away with the actual email address the service address because as you know email addresses cannot be duplicated which is why they used upper cases on theirs and paypal have all lower case as you can see service at paypal.com.au they have the exact same email address except it's all in upper case these are the irregularities and the differences you need to look out for because if you don't spot these differences you're going to get scammed so i'm here to tell you to watch out for these things and don't be a fool make sure you double check everything and if you're unsure about anything make sure you actually forward the email to paypal first and they will verify whether it actually came from them and remember that paypal emails are automated so that means that you cannot reply directly to them by clicking reply you actually have to go into your paypal account and then go into help and then click on uh, contact paypal and then send the email through there and forward the email through there never reply directly to them and even if you try to reply to an, a paypal email it will never go through because it'll tell you it's an automated email and you cannot reply to them and you, you will not receive a response okay now so please remember this guys it's very important that you look out for these things that i'm showing you here today and if you have any further questions please let me know in the comments below and uh, i'll try to answer anything that i've you know skipped past or anything that i forgot to mention or anything that you've spotted that i haven't spotted yet please let me know in the comments below and uh, let's get the word out there let's not let these mother pucking scammers win and let them scam more people out of their hard-earned money like i said before if you've ever been scammed before you know exactly how i feel and it it just infuriates me that i just you know I, sometimes i just can't keep my cool you know and i just want to you know i just want to uh, but you know i'm bigger than that and i'm bigger than my problems so you know let's just remain calm and let's just get the word out there so these scam artists can't win and uh, we can get on top of all these scams now before i go i actually want to show you a close-up of these emails like i promised and i'm going to list for you all the scams that i've come across or that i've heard of and just to keep you guys up to date as well with the different types of scams that are out there so here's the list of them and until next time guys thanks for watching do whatever you need to do share this video and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video Thanks again, and this is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Okay guys, so as you can see from the top three emails, they're all the scam emails. And the bottom three are actually the legitimate emails from PayPal themselves. Okay guys, so I know I said that I was going to list the different types of scams that are out there. But instead, I'm actually going to talk about some of the different types of scams. But to give you guys a better in-depth description of all the different types of scams I wanted to actually leave you with a website from here in Australia but I'm pretty sure that worldwide all countries everywhere around the world are going to have a similar website dedicated to scam watching and they they would 
update it frequently in order to keep everybody up to date with the different types of scams that are out there. Now, for the types of scams that are out there, the most, the worst ones out there and the most deadly ones out there would be the attempts to gain your personal information. Then it comes to buying and selling where scammers prey on consumers and businesses that are trying to buy and sell products and services and not every transaction is legit. Now that's exactly the one that I showed you today where I was trying to sell a car. Then there are also dating and romance ones where scammers take advantage of people looking for romantic partners, often via dating websites, apps or social media by pretending to be a prospective companion and they play on emotional triggers to get you to provide money, gifts or personal details. Then there are fake charities and you can imagine what they do. Investments, if you're looking for a way to make fast money, Watch out, scammers have invented all sorts of fake money making opportunities to prey on enthusiastic and to get hold of your cash. Jobs and employment. Jobs and employment scams trick you into handing over your money by offering you a guaranteed way to make fast money or high turning interest paid job and employment opportunities. Threats and extortion. Scamming, scammers will use any means possible to steal your identity or your money, including threatening your life or hijacking your computer. Unexpected money. Scam, scammers can even invent convincing and seemingly legitimate reasons to give you false hope about offers of money. There are no get rich quick schemes, so always think twice before handing over your details or dollars. Unexpected winnings. Now, this one can come in many forms emails via mobile phone or even uh, emails that you need to open don't be lured by a surprise win these scams try to trick you into giving money up front or your personal information in order to receive a prize from a lottery or competition that you never entered these are just brief examples of the different types of scams that are out there but I'm going to leave a link in the description below of the actual website and please do check it out because I'm telling you now, we need to get above all this.